so without further ado, I'd like to welcome the Prime Minister to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout all history, we know that when criminals are released from the prisons, they won't stop their life refreshed again, like being a new person. But the problem is that when they go out hunting for a job to start their life with, they are going to be faced with a lot of discriminations from the companies, of, from the employees, because of the so-called criminal records they get. And actually, it is really difficult for them to get a proper job that can help them re restart their life again, refreshed and new, newly. And even though that they did fortunately get a job into a certain company, the situation of them is that they are still going to be discriminated by their like um, colleagues because, again, of the criminal record. So today, the government side strongly believe that we should uh, the all criminal records of individuals who have been punished by the state, which, mean, which means that they have already served their years in the, in the prison or have already been fined and paid money properly, that when they get out of the prison, when they want to re restart their life again, the criminal records should be permanently erased from the uh, files that can be easily get uh, that can be easily gotten access to by individuals instead of the files in the government under the condition that they are not that this is the first time that they commit a crime. Um, I'm going to talk mainly about three arguments. The first is that we, the government side believe that all people, or at least the majority of the people in the society are good people. The nature are good, they are born a good people. And secondly is that we believe that punishment is not the ultimate um, purpose of what we are doing, like punish punish those criminals, what we want, what is our ultimate purpose is that to help them restart their life again, rehabilitate them, so that they can make some um, compensations to, for the society. And thirdly, it is about, it is about, um, uh, the, the benefits that we're going to get from this policy. Firstly, we come to that we this oh this government believe that the majority of the people or all people are all naturally good because that we would like to assume that people are born to be a good people. We are all want to kind of like we we want to be a good people because we it, it is really a tragedy to assume that every people have the tendency to commit a crime under the condition that they are not strongly stressed by the society or they are for, it's like that when I can be a good people, why cannot I be a good people? Why will I have to go and commit a crime and to be like um, cr criticized by the society and the people around me? And it's like that um, as the policy has already said that they have already got the punishment from the state, which means that when they get out of the prison, they are just like one of us. They are just like, they are just common, a common person, which means that they have the right to enjoy the liberty, which is the basic needs of human beings, like every one of us does. But it's like if you have the criminal records in the companies that the boss, the colleagues know that you are once a criminal, they are going to be, maybe they may not that strongly discriminate you, but what they are going to do is like that they will secretly think, think that you are still a potential um, criminal, that maybe you will commit a crime someday, sooner or later. And in, in fact, this, be, this kind of being cautious this kind of setting a colorful eye for those um, one's criminals is a still a covered up kind of discrimination. And that's exactly what we want to stop. Um, 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 so basically that we think that the majority of the people are good and the, the, uh, and the, the one's criminals still have the right to enjoy as common people do. 
According to your policy, if they are not committing for the first time, then they will still need to keep their record. Now, if you believe rehabilitation works so well that after their rehabilitation, they will be working as a new person ever again, why would you discriminate people who commit a crime for two times and still getting that file in their record? That's what we are saying. We believe we we like to believe that most of people want to reflash a new life again, but we cannot deny that there are still a minority group of people who commit crime intentionally because. It's like I rape a woman because I get satisfaction. Uh, oh, okay, I'm a woman myself. I'm a woman myself. It's like I get the physical satisfaction or the, some kind of crazy mental satisfaction from doing like raping a woman. And nobody's gonna to guarantee that I when I get out of the prison, I wouldn't want to do that again. That's why we say that under the condition of that uh, under the condition that they are not they it is the first time that they commit a crime. And secondly, we go to that. Um, um, punishment is not the ultimate goal of the government. Rehab, um, rehab, rehabilitation is, we, we think that everybody enjoys the right to enjoy their life because we are all equal, um, regardless of the color or the skin. And we believe that by rehabilitating people, we can ultimately achieve a good, so a harmonious society. And secondly, one of the benefits that we're going to get, firstly, is about that, um, it's about, and the other may say that you are actually like encouraging the criminals. You, you are in, uh, potentially increase the rate of recommitting a crime. But actually, what we are going to get is to the, is the decrease of the rate of decrease um, recommitting a crime because the reason why they why the criminals recom uh, recommit a crime is because that when they get out of the prison, they are still. So lack of the opportunities to start their life again, they are still discriminated. They still have so limited opportunities to get a job to start their life again. That's why they are so oppressed. Those are desperate, so they recommit a crime again. So based all based on all this, we are so happily to approach. Thank you. Now let's call upon the leader of opposition. We think the government side has done a very soft case by saying that the first time when you commit crime, well, we will erase your criminal record, while the second and third will record that. So, which, what are the stance of you by telling us? Uh, well, the, those stance, they try to tell us the majority of people have good nature. That is why we want to forgive them. And we believe the moment that you finish the rehabilitation procedure, you are a new, a new person. You are someone that of intrinsic good value. So if this person, the moment the way he finished the rehabilitation procedure, why this person still recommit a crime? We don't know whether this is a problem. Uh, uh, this is a problem of those individuals from his psychology, of his poor experience, of suffering from the social pressures, or the other reasons or limited res uh, opportunities as they presented to us. That we think there is a multiple reasons contribute to those consequences. Well, they are trying to give us a blank policy by trying to solve the problem regardless of the uh, sof sophistication and uniquity of each individual thing. And second, if they try to say, well, we think nature of people are good, we want to forgive them, offer them a good opportunity, why you still record, keep this a criminal record of the second and third criminals? We think this is a, something shifty, uh, something problematic for the soft case. So secondly, um, what we're going to tell you? Well, we say, well, they are trying to say that well, because the, the public are not ready, we start facing discrimination or misunderstanding towards this group of people. We agree. Well, we say, that, yes, there is need certain time and period to let the, let the public receive that. Well, we have another other policies to that. We can offer halfway houses to those criminals to, to let them safely pass through these transparent periods and then offer them further more guidances, help them getting to through and really integrate it back to the society. Why necessary in this way? I hope the, op uh, the proposition side, the deputy prime minister, will answer this question for me. What I'm going to 
presents you minus beta. Firstly, we have to say this is an imperfect word. And the rehabilitation mechanism, well, even if they, they are trying to, we are, uh, the, the, even if they're solving a uh, majority of problems, but still, there's a problem solving uh, mismatch upon individual levels, uh, failing to take into consideration of the uniqueness of those individuals. And secondly, we're going to tell you why it is the corporation's right and their benefits to judge person according to their records, according to their uh, things, to so selecting the employees that rightly they want. Firstly, about the input, uh, about re uh, rehabilitation mechanism we have. What we say here is that most of the time, what we re rehabilitate is not uh, it's not as going to schools that you can enjoy all the freedom you have. You are put into a prison. You have to follow all those instructions, follow those uh, restrictions uh, presented by the officers, set by the country. Well, this kind of limited resources, and limited information, and limited interaction with outside of people, we don't think this is a perfect solution to really rehabilitate those people. And worstly is that we don't take into the individual cases one by one. Most of the time we just have a gathered class of a huge bunch of criminals who come and commit similar crimes. However, we think that those crimes, there are multiple reasons for them to commit certain crime. Why? We think crime, well, people have multiple reasons. First is about personal reasons, and second is about social reasons. We think many people, they simply have different psychology than other people. For example, those pedophiles, they have this kind of obsession with children. That is why even if you put them into the prison for such a long time, as long as they still maintain their obsession, the moment they went outside the prison, they still have the intention, have the desire to offend another child. So we think this is something really problematic that we need to take into consideration while the existing mechanism fail to uh, consider it. And secondly, we talk about social reasons. Well, well we say the, the exact uh, perfect example will be the black and white people because they are facing huge amount of uh, discrimi discrimination from the society. Well, if the society cannot solve the discrimination problem, the moment he steps out of the prison, he will be re-exposed to the atmosphere, re-exposed to the basic motives that he originally committed the crime. So we think the re-offense, even though we have provided a lot of education system, we have provided a whole bunch of actual uh, uh, activities for those criminals, we cannot 100% ensure this person will be a totally new, uh, new person who have no bad intention for the society. Secondly, I want to talk to you why the corporation's right to select those that. We think the corporation, firstly, they are the one who try to protect the benefits of the shareholders. They are definitely in a position to select the person they re really want. For example, if I was in a banking system, well, formality and professionals are one of the prior uh, concerns for me. I don't like people who are too innovative, who don't like follow the rules. Well, we think this is totally, uh, 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 totally reasonable for those corporations to select the person they want, uh, judging their personality, judging their background, judging from the experience they have. Well, certainly, we also say this is also for the benefits of those employees who, who really, uh, uh, who re if they cannot get, it, uh, get access to that, if they really find that they are contradicting in conflict with the corporation culture, they suffered already. Why we say this is case apply to the criminal cases? If uh, suppose that if a pedophile, if we are kindergarten, we want to find a guard who try to secure the basic security of those children. Well, a pedophile, time and time, day and day, facing the temptation of a huge bunch of children, single and not, and very cute guys. We don't know whether this person can resist this kind of temptation. We don't know whether this person can better restrain towards his ability or judging towards that. Well, on the other side, we have also a group of people who have no such kind of offense history, who really show their passion towards children. Why we don't select this group of people? So we think when it comes to the specific job of those children, it's totally justifiable for those corporations to select the person based on their needs. Well, what I present
present it to you, Madam Speaker. Firstly, we think this is an imperfect word. Rehabilitation cannot ensure a person is totally anew because th th this is based on the uniqueness of individuals and the social phenomenon. And based on this individual needs and individuality, we think it's the totally the corporation's right to interfere, to select the person who have the traits they desire most and exclude the person who don't have the, who have the traits they hate most. So we think it uh, for those reasons, we are, uh, we are proud to oppose. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's call upon the Deputy Prime Minister. give four rebuttals for the opening opposition. The first one is about actually the government can give the house subsidies for those uh, for those rehabilitated uh, people to go through this kind of trans period. But actually those who keep their criminal record don't only have the problem of housing but then also receives problem of all perspectives like the injustice in uh, social employ employment, which has been largely emphasized by the opening opposition. And the second one maybe is about lack of um, the, um, the fulfillment, the feeling of fulfillment and achievement. And the third is about that actually those rehabilitated um, people has been already in the very as an inferior status in this society. And actually, we let them continue keeping the criminal record. And we are assuming that we would like to stay, sorry, not that time, to stay his, uh, his actual inferior status in this society. And actually, we would like to promote equality. So that's why there's another noun, it's about leveling equality. So in this way, whether we should consider we try a way to leveling those inferior status of the rehabilitated people. So that's why we propose that we should permanently erase this criminal record under the condition that they will never commit again. And for the second battle, it's okay. When we talk about leveling playing field, we are talking about actually making sure there's equality when there's no real reason for you to discriminate. But for these people, they ask for it. They commit the crime themselves. They know that they're going to be discriminated. Face it. Here, here. Oh, actually, they are not. How is that when they commit crime? They're not sorry that the whole idea that I will be get discriminated no matter where I will go later in my rest of my life. They are not necessarily have this kind of idea. And actually, there is many reasons for commit uh, crimes. That is why it's carefulness. Or the one is that not mature. And this is a variety of reasons that's, that's why open opposition proposed that people has their uniqueness and has their uh, sophistication. So that's why we think that we should consider those people's inferior status in society and the level of equality. And for the, uh, for the third rebuttal, it's about the uh, prison mechanism. We like to say, actually, it should be perverted in some way. But we cannot, because of that, the prison mechanism has some problems. So they want to do some other things to compensate this kind of you know, uh, flaw. So what we should do is try to perfect the prison, the prison mechanism itself. And we should actually try to assign some uh, psychologists to every every criminal in this prison and try to record their psychological changes or their sorry not their time changes or their performance in their trade. But actually, this is not necessarily to ensure that they will not commit crime after rehabilitation. But it's a better perfection. But we try to do it better. It's not necessary that we should do another thing to compensate for this part of law. And for the fourth part, it's about the <coughs> social reason. Just now that op open opposition has mentioned about the white people and the black people in American society. And that's what uh, exactly what I would like to say in my construct speech. And for the first part is that we try to figure out those crimi criminological, uh, psychological problems from those criminals. Th th why they commit crimes? Because they, they cannot fail the 
uh, achievements in study, they cannot feed themselves in studies because uh, so they see or because that they have some very extreme psychological problems. That's another case. So the so actually, uh, we if we how to say let them continue keeping the criminal uh, record after they uh, were released from the jail, we will again provide the environments the earth the soil for them to recommit suicide, uh, commit crimes because that they, they will feel again that the lack of achievements feel again the injustice feel again that that the inferior people in the society so that's the first one that we should consider from the criminological uh, uh, perspective of those criminals and that's why we think that this proposal will actually increase uh, you increase, decrease the recommit uh, crimes rate. And for the second part, is about that we would like to say, the keeping the crime record actually itself to uh, uh, has to remind people around this rehabilitated people that we should uh, take, we should how to say a little bit keep away from it. Just like the 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 previous case that we deal with the AIDS people. And actually, that's why there's a very famous movie called Philadelphia. And that in it, the, the protagonist, they got employed suddenly, and they got their friends or their um, boss that leave their away suddenly. Oh, that's this is that actually AIDS does not will uh, be contagious. So that's why. That's because that it's stuff that will assume that they will, they will recommit crimes again. So we would like people to treat them normally. And in this way, that we will actually finally uh, finally wipe out this kind of discrimination and realize the purpose of give them another opportunity. And for the third part is about the rights of majority and the rights of the minority. And actually we propose that people tend to be both good, naturally good. And just because they, they were treated in some bad way and they could not get what they want. So they just turn to some extreme way. So actually in this way, if we just let all of the criminals to keep the criminal record, naturally, we are just protect the minority people's rights by sacrificing the majority people's interests. Because m uh, most of the criminals, they are not have the kind of intention to commit crimes again. And so in this way that we add another condition is that if those criminals they commit uh, crimes again, that we will not give this kind of uh, rights to them to raise their records. So that we would like we would not like those majority people to hurt the majority people later after their rehabilitation. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite the WD to Ladies and gentlemen, the proposition is still confused about what they are actually trying to argue. When they are talking about HIV AIDS affected people, or they are talking about social discrimination that they so want to fight for, we do agree that we need to give them equal rights. But for criminals that we are talking about in this debate, when they clearly asked for the kind of punishment that, like, because of the crime that they have committed, when they clearly actually, like, 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 even if they are compo like impulsively committing crime, that they do know that there will be a consequence, and they do serve the kind of sentence that they need to serve. We say that it's important for us to understand that it's their responsibility, and they should take it. We can't give them a leeway and just let them escape from this reality. Let's face it, the world is imperfect, but we need to protect our world. And that's why in our case, we basically believe that for justice, we are talking about the justice for all the people. In my speech, we're talking about, we're going to talk about why this criminal record would offer right to information for people that is innocent in this society versus overly protected group of people who committed murder. But before that, let's first talk about a number of rebuttals. When they 
talk about like we need to give not only housing subsidies, we need to actually perfect our system for rehabilitation. That's exactly what my partner has been talking about when she was mentioning about halfway house. It's not only about a house that we offer, it's about a transitional period that we give these criminals. That once they finish and once we make sure that they have rehabilitated, we give them a transitional job, we give them a transitional housing and shelter, we make sure that they can actually get out of prison. Yet, even with these kind of mechanisms facilitating or complementing the rehabilitation, we are still need to face and respond to my partner's question about what is the nature of rehabilitation. If rehabilitation as a blanket policy can't take cater to the personal issue of that criminal, can't reduce and remove the motive of that criminal, can't remove the social reasons in which when they are re-exposed to the society, they will still need to commit crime to deal with, we think that you can't eventually deal with the problem at all we need to really find a way to help the, like, the mass public to actually deal with it. Now secondly, right, when they are talking about like, basically uh, discrimination and like, these job opportunities that's unfair for these criminals who have served like, sentences, we think that you need to now consider other stakeholders as well in our debate. Let's talk about it, right? When we're arguing about law, we usually talk about four different functions of law, and right? that's usually what I teach when I was training. So eventually, when we're talking about deterrence, right? Yes, we do have extra deterrence on our case. When these people need to know, right? They are now informed that it's your responsibility to take care of your own re-entry to the society. It makes it more difficult, now you need to face it. Now before they commit crime, they are now more deterred. Now secondly, right? When we're talking about rehabilitation, as we argued just now, right? Even if you perfect the system of rehabilitation, it doesn't deal with the direct cause of crime. It doesn't remove the like, fe like fetal house obsession for the, the child. It doesn't really help you to change the society. So it's not really an issue in this debate. We agree that we want to rehabilitate as much as possible, but in this imperfect world, we need to have some limitation. But when we're talking about, for example, like this punishment, right? Clearly this is also not really inside of this topic, and yet our punishment might be a little bit more given that we are giving them additional difficulties. But there's one key word that's been always neglected throughout this debate, which is protection to all the other innocent people in this society. My partner was arguing for, for example, when you're in, like, in, trying to recruit an employee that as a human resource manager, you might need to know about the criminal record for that person and because of that we need to understand it. But there are also many other factors, many other stakeholders in the society that need to know as well. Yes. If we think other kinds of profiling, maybe stating I'm a paranoid, paranoid or stating that I'm a potential failure, can also serve for the cooperation to know more about the employees. But Why does it have to be criminal record? Okay. Eventually, right, that's how we judge a, a, like any other employee in like any like corporation when they're hiring. That's as what my partner has argued, right? In your CV, you list all your experience. The, the human resource manager will judge in a comprehensive manner. Now you're trying to actively hide part of your experience. And you basically have two way out, right? The first way out is what you mentioned. You replace this criminal record with a record of paranoia. So now in this case, you are creating a new discrimination, which is what your side so much want to fight against, right? Yeah. In, and in the second case, right, if these two things doesn't really overlap and you can't really inform the employer anymore, now what happens is that this hiding of like these particular situation would eventually result in the kind of problem my partner described, for example, kindergarten teacher being a pedophile, right? But that's more than that. We say that these kind of profiling might be needed for other stakeholders. Let's say, right, you want to get married to someone, right? You didn't know that they're actually they have a criminal record. Now, if you do really want to check the background of your lover, and they, you might need to understand your lover based on all sorts of information that you need. This is a decision about marriage that actually might last for your whole life, and it's a life decision and identity choice that you might need to carefully think about. So with that kind of situation, are you going to lie actively with the help of the garment to your spouse to make sure that your spouse get into a wrongful actually marriage that they 
they didn't choose in the very first place. It's not only about marriage. It's also about, for example, these pedophiles. When we do understand from statistics that more than 60% of pedophiles do re-offend because they simply have an obsession for kids. What happened is that eventually we might need to also inform people around that pedophile who have children around, who, how do you eventually keep your child safe? That might affect a lot of people's decision. For example, when they are buying a new house and they might want to know what are exactly their neighbors and how exactly their neighbor and this neighborhood will affect the life of these people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not only the life of the murderers or the criminals that we're talking about, it's also all the other lives surrounding the criminal that is at stake now. When you hide their criminal record, when there's no way for other people to check their criminal record anymore, we've simply removed this possibility for other people to be informed and therefore they can take their own personal action to protect themselves from the potential threat of these people right if we know that these people are prone to a certain kind of social like like bias or whatever we can actually help a way to figure out and to help these people right eventually you reduce this you undermine this rehabilitation process by taking away other people's way to help them by taking away uh, like these like by, by taking away other people's being alerted informed we strongly opposed for the reason that we want to protect the whole society. Here that concludes the open house. I'd like to welcome the member of the Okay, good afternoon, Madam Speaker, and uh, exactly uh, honorable members of the house. Uh, I feel very honored to debate in this room because uh, I've lost many opportunities to be trained by you know, Dr. Ge. But I do remember that I was told that one principle for criminal justice is proportionality. Well, a uh, deputy leader of the proposition said the criminals know the consequences, they're going to be discriminated, so they should face it. However, we think that this, the way society punishes this, this kind of criminals should be exact, exactly fixed according to the law. So this kind of discrimination or inconvenience that they suffer after they have been already punished, punished according to the law is not justified. Well, in the first half of today's debate, uh, we've been arguing about cooperation and uh, criminal, uh, criminals' rights in, in, in joint society. Um, after, after rebutting several points, I'd like to shift the focus to more <coughs> of a criminal system. So first, uh, first argument going to the rehabilitation argument by the uh, leader of the opposition. While we do agree that <coughs> rehabilitation doesn't happen according to the one, one by one case, we don't, we, don't check whether, we don't check all the reasons for you to conduct cer uh, certain crimes. But what is true is that rapists are often uh, grouped in one, one jail and murderers are grouped in another jail. So still rehabilitation has its target according to the type of crime that they conduct. Stop. Sorry, point not taken. Furthermore, we see there are also a kind of crime called passionate crime. And that's that's a, that's the sort of crime that we think uh, that has been maybe actively behind by the opposition side today. So second argument they talk about the cooperation has a right or citizens have a right to know. We we say that there are other kinds of profiling for you to know about your employee, for you to know about your neighbor, uh, neighbor. that doesn't have to be connected with a, with a criminal record. Why do we say that? We're not saying we discriminate paranoids, but paranoids may be not suitable for certain jobs, and, it, the, and the corroboration is justified to not employ them in this case. But we don't think that it's necessary to include the criminal records, because that will lead to more Unnecessary discrimination that will be that, that will be covered in my constructive points. So but yeah, what's your point? Okay. So if 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 you talk about passionate crime, you think that they so need to be reduced of their sentence. Why currently, even if they don't know the consequence of the current sentence term that they need to serve, they still need to serve it. Say murder for twenty years or something. They don't know it, right? As you say. Uh, can I ask a question? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I try to answer that question later, but in my constructive speech, I'm going to tell you why 
why criminal records creates a kind of collective error for people to discriminate these, these, these criminals? The very reason we have criminal records is for better for police to track, on, track, track, uh, track down criminals, real offenders, right? But we see that people are not that, not absolutely reasonable in, in some senses. Why do we say that? Because we are born into storytellers. We are more obsessed with hearing stories. We want to see the world as a story that makes sense, that is continuous, that makes sense to us. That's why when we are taught algebra, something that is abstract, we are less easily to take in. But when we, te when we are told a story about the economic case, we are more easy to know the ideas behind this, about this theory. So same thing here. What happens is that people have the tendency to see causation between two, maybe between two cases that may be independent. So if, if individuals, if, if I'm an employer and I hire, I hire my partner and I know that he's a theft before, so once that, uh, once that happened in my, in my company, the, very f the first person that I look, look to is my partner. But that doesn't ha necessarily should be the case. But when I first presuppose that my partner as a, uh, as a criminal has been punished is a refender, it actually harms the police and the ju uh, judicial system to really fight the crime justly. Why do you say that? We say, it's just like doing an experiment. When, it, when, when you're doing an experiment to explore something, fine. You, you, you set up the experiment, you see what is happening, and, and, and you try to reason why this is happening. But when you're doing an experiment to examine something, it's very likely that you have a kind of expectation or tendency for certain results. And in that case, it's very dangerous and likely for scientists to look for evidence and data that support their support their view, support their result, their favorite result, but selectively neglect, ignore, uh, ignore data that is against them. So, so similarly, sorry, point not taking, similarly for, 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 uh, for police or individuals or, 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 the, or the court, when they are taking this kind of criminal record into, into account, they may roundly, uh, roundly presuppose that their previous Criminal, uh, criminal activity could, could be the reason that they are a refender. And these kind of prejudice and presupposition uh, is, is not justified in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the legal process. And therefore, we think, it's, uh, we think it's not right to have it. And I remember there's a POI from the, from, from Da Biao Ge. Uh, so why do we still punish uh, passionate crimes? Because there are already consequences, right? But the consequences, the consequences of uh, passionate crimes are already there. But all your assumption that these criminals with criminal records may really offend is presupposition and assumption. Because without any solid foundation, we, 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 we suppose that people are innocent. In, in, in the first place. I think that's one of the principles of modern uh, criminal justice system. And based on the reasons, we think because criminal records brings in this kind of, or enhances this kind of cognitive error, and harms the justice of criminal, uh, criminal legal systems, we're proud of, to propose. Gentlemen, uh, first, uh, we're sorry to see a naive and irresponsible government today because uh, you, uh, all your arguments are based on a huge unrealistic assumption. That is, the majority of people are born good, and after the punishment, that simply all criminals are, um, can renew themselves into to normal good people again. But that's just an unreali unrealistic um, assumption because our principle here is we can't risk. The, our um, security and our stability and prosperity of our whole society to give chances, countless chances to the criminals again and again for their renewal and which there's no guarantee at all. 
So um, before um, uh, our uh, opening opposition has um, elaborated on the protection of other innocent people in the society, and I have three arguments to make. And the first is, the, um, let's um, analysis the characteristic of the criminals. First, they have the purpose, and they have the method, and they have the bravery to commit crimes, which means um, chances are that they, com they will commit crimes again, uh, which leads to the habitual criminals. So uh, as for the, uh, those who already committed crimes, uh, if uh, we don't erase their record, uh, they will have some tag on, their, uh, on themselves. They, they may feel guilty and they may want to uh, eliminate the, the, the people's opinion on them. So they will work harder to change people's opinion and to earn more good record for themselves. So that's the way to rehabilitate and because they have the motivation, have the, the dynamics to rehabilitate themselves rather than simply erasing the record. That's just will worsen the situation. So if we, if, if not, uh, if we just uh, erase the record, they will just uh, commit crime again. That's, that's just um, a, a loss of the function of rehabilitation and also the loss of function of deterrence. And as for those who, sorry, and as for those who intend to commit crimes, if they know that the record will be erased, they are just encouraged to commit crimes because um, the risks are very low. But if the record will keep forever, they will like they feel that the, um, the risks are high and they may they won't risk their future life and risk their reputation to commit crimes anymore. So that's a function of deterrence. Yeah. And point, yeah, sure. So you are assuming that a murderer won't murder a people, a mur murder a person because then I will be tagged as a murderer before I murder in a pe um after I murder a person. I don't get your point. So you're assuming that a murderer won't murder a person if he knows that I won't I will be tagged as a murderer for the rest of his life. Yeah, but for those who already have the tag on themselves, they may, they may feel uh, if they want to go back to the society to live a normal life, they will behave more uh, more properly to prevent them from uh, having uh, to commit crime again. So um, the, uh, the second part of uh, my, my elaboration is the stakeholders. Um, as mentioned by the opening opposition, they have mentioned the employ employers of the companies and the family members. But when we want to um, uh, um, lay emphasis on the, uh, the government department, if um, everyone has, uh, has the equal right to enter our government department, but what if someone just com uh, commits serious crimes and they just pretend to be normal people and just to, to uh, get into the um, government department and to, and to get into the key department especially, how about, uh, what if they commit serious crimes to, to cause uh, serious loss to our government? And uh, as for the family, um, uh, in this case, it's not only a matter of criminals, it's about everyone in the society who, who everyone has the potential to be the partner, a lifelong partner of a, a one's a criminal. So we have the, uh, as a government, we have um, the responsibility and the duty to ensure the safety and happiness of every citizen in our society. So we, 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 we need to ensure everyone knows um, the person he he or she uh, uh, are going to uh, are going to marry to um, beforehand, and the third goes to the national security. Um, maybe there are some skilled and habitual criminals, maybe like spies, they may uh, threaten the domestic international security. And if uh, we have the record of their crim uh, crime, we can help the judge to, to judge their, um, their crime on the court. And also we can pre prevent more serious crimes to create peace, and that's our ultimate goal, right? And as for the third part, I want to elaborate on the collective interest of the society. First, let's stand on the perspective of the whole human race, sorry. We all want to create a peaceful, a harmonious a world. We can't risk our society, um, our social stability for the interests of those criminals because the criminals are just a minority of our society. Sorry, but erasing the record, you are, you, what you're going, uh, what you're actually doing is to increase uh, to, to decrease the value of punishment and the sentence. You will decrease the power and the value of our criminal and justice system because people will don't see the court as the highest, the highest institution to solve our social problems. They will just um, uh, no longer respect the, the, the highest court because um, it's more like a joke, sorry, it's more like a what day in our daily life because you, you just sentence a people 
census people and you just erase the record and there can be mo no more people again. So they will actually they will lose the power and the value of the our um, criminal criminal and justice system. Go. We believe that people have the right to be just equally according to the law. If you really believe in your so-called collective uh, interest or collective interest, why don't you execute all the criminals? But actually, um, those criminals they have they have done harm to our society. But the ultimate goal we, uh, of our uh, government is to protect all the citizens to have a safe life. So, but they. If the uh, rehabilitation and the renewal of the crim crim criminals are based on the risks and based on the danger of our whole society, but so uh, in this case we, we have to yield their rights to protect the, ma the majority of our government. So uh, in this case uh, we think the record is um, uh, the, the, the symbol of the power of the, our crim criminal and justice system so we can't erase them easily. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now it's one of the last speaker of the government bench. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, about today's debate, I have uh, there are several clashes, but before I move on to those real cl uh, clashes, I'd like to make several rebuttals. Um, Actually, I thought uh, the, the opposition side, especially the member of the opposition side, has offered some very ridiculous arguments, though there are many of them. First, uh, uh, if I'm not, uh, uh, if, uh, if I'm, I remember it clearly, he, she, she mentioned that because criminals have purposes, methods, and uh, they have the, the bravery to c commit crimes, so they will, uh, it's very possible that they'll com commit crimes again. I don't. Actually, I don't see any kind of logic in this, uh, let's say, argument or things like that. It, is, is that, a, is it, uh, do you really believe that criminals are born to commit crimes and commit crimes again and again? So, and, this, and the second uh, rebuttal I wanna make is that uh, you said that if we, if we erase this kind of criminal, uh, criminal records after they have been punished uh, uh, for example, uh, after they have been sentenced for five or six years, after they have done that, uh, they, they will. Uh, it, it's kind of encourage. Uh, this kind of policy is encouraging them to commit crimes again. So, uh, what you uh, the, the the rebuttal that you have made about uh, about the government side is that we are uh, we believe that uh, we are very naive to believe that the people or the majority of people are born to be good. So what you are implying uh, is that uh, criminals are born to be criminals, which I don't see, which I don't see, the not, not now, which I don't see the difference. And, and actually the third, the third arguments you made about uh, cr what if cr criminals pretend, pretending, what if criminals pretend to be, to pretend that they are good people and then cr commit crimes again, I don't see the difference. Uh, at all, and then I'll come to the uh, now. I'm going. Uh, I'm, go I'm. I'm. I'm moving on to the clashes. Uh, the first clash. Uh, the first clash that happened uh, ha happening here is that whether rehabilitation is necessary. Uh, actually, the government side. Uh, the government side. We believe that rehabilitation is very necessary and is effect uh, effective nowadays, but. I, I think the opposition side offers several suggestions that we don't see, uh, that we don't see which contradict our views. For example, they offered means, uh, they offered means like halfway housing or uh, they just uh, have to go through this transitional periods before, to move, before they move on to this, uh, move on to their, let's say, refreshed life or something like that. So, uh, first, they uh, first they, uh, they they question the rehabilitation. Then they just uh, they question the effectiveness of rehabilitation. Then they offer some other ways of rehabilitation. I think that's pretty good. And then the second thing, and then the second clash that uh, uh, which is whether it is right for society for society to judge someone according to the criminal records. Actually, ours, uh, uh, just as my partner has mentioned, our, our side believe that 
uh, criminals have uh, criminal uh, the, the punishment is done is is done when uh, when when the sentence or other uh, community services have been done for them it's it is not just justified for, the, for the, the, all those people to have easy access to their criminal records to judge what kind of, uh, what, what kind of person they are. And different reasons to commit crime, even though they commit murder. Different persons have different reasons, different causes to commit such murder. Okay, so. If other people have no right to judge a person by their criminal record, when we have already clearly argued to you that other people might be threatened because of the presence of someone with a criminal record, how are you going to address that? Uh, um, there, uh, actually, there is uh, something called the Rick, Rick, uh, Rick Native uh, Arrow that's. Okay, we we'll <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me make two rebuttals to our opening to our government. And in the first of place, um they they told us that um uh, they told us that um uh, such records is is a violation of the uh, criminal's human rights. Now let me make some rebuttals. Um, do you have you ha have you ever heard about a penalty uh, which is deprive the the, uh, the criminal of their political rights for their lifetime? Yeah, yeah. And will you uh, will you regard the death penalty as a violating to someone's living rights? And as your logic goes by, um, they. Uh, they des uh, what de what the criminals deserve is kind of uh, is kind of damage to the human rights. Then uh, uh, then uh, then goes by uh, our jury system is almost a joke. And and secondly, uh, the rebuttal the two uh, the rebuttal two. Um, we don't say that criminals are born to be criminal. The reason why they commit a crime has much to do with the living circumstance and uh, the and their personality and their experience in their lifetime. And do you think after such so-called rehabilitation and every of these I have mentioned before have all gone and the and the potential they will they will continue to commit a crime of the factors which influence them. Uh, are all disappear, so they will just be a new guy with, uh, with no problems. I think uh, that's too naive and ide and ideal. And sorry, sir. And then, uh, secondly, makes uh, let me make some highlightment of my partner's opinions. Um, uh, first of all, um, our house strongly, uh, our house strongly opposed to erase all the uh, all the crime re records of the criminals and because uh, for the pr protection first of all uh, for the employees uh, I I think uh, keep keeping the employees and know of their employers uh, their their past experience uh, may cause a potential harm to the a normal run of the enterprise and may cause some law, uh, may cause some financial loss. Yeah. And secondly, about the family. Now, let me think. If uh, if you marry a guy who have committed a crime and you don't, you have no known about this. And and then uh, after you get married and the uh, the quality and the, the temperament 
uh, that uh, that caused him to commit a crime uh, revealed again, then there will be inharmony of the family and some things like uh, a domestic uh, violence and will occur again. Now that's, uh, uh, how to say, there's a threat to our family. And for deterrence, um, our house believes that uh, such such duration may bring about the mushrooming of the habitual criminals. Now, uh, let's imagine if a, uh, if a, a crime just, uh, uh, if a, a, his records are all erased, and then he could just uh, go, uh, go to the crime again. If he was not uh, caught, that's okay. And, and if he was caught, he can go to jail. And after that, he was uh, his records are all erased. He was also a normal man again. Yeah, I think that's um, uh, so speaking. Or on one hand, such duration may be the threat of the sta stability of our society, and on the other hand, that will do damage to the current existent existent uh, law system and legitimation procedure. Now, let me make the summary of our house. Uh, there is two clash between uh, the both sides, and first of all, clash the clash one. Uh, the uh, should these criminals be viewed as totally the same as our innocent people? The uh, our proposition believes that the majority of the people are viewed they are ingenuine, and every of them should be entitled right to be a new guy. And however, our house believes that if someone choose to commit a crime, there must be problems with. Uh, he saw her psychology or behavior, and uh, uh, as we all know, criminals are sometimes linked to linked with extremity uh, in their behaving way, and and uh, there and there may be uh, and and uh, uh, the. However, after all, criminals are criminals. Such punishment is what they deserve, and rehabilitation is one thing. However, the punishment is quite another. Um, if a guy he was just uh, released from the uh, from the prison, and he uh, sorry sir, and he performed uh, he performed very well. Yeah, the rehabilitation and the good uh, good reward for him is okay. However, what he had done before, which uh, violates the harmonious of the society. It deserves the punishment. Okay. okay. Does the law state that once you have a crime, you have to be punished with all those discrimination and prejudice from society? Pardon? Does the law state that once you have committed a crime, no matter how serious or not, you have to face or be punished with all those prejudice and discrimination from society? I will, I will leave your uh, leave your question and I will explain it in my later speech. And clash two, um, uh, 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 clash two is that letting others know about their misbehaviors before is necessary or not. Uh, our uh, the proposition belie believes that is a kind of discrimination. However, our house believes that the employees. Uh, uh, their their future employees, their future partners should be informed of their records and then decide whether they will take the risk to accept the the, uh, the past criminals. And uh, however, I want to uh, emphasize is that what we want to get to know is not the paper which have has their uh, their uh, criminal records attached on, but the uh, but the uh, stakeholders should. Uh, understand the potential threatening uh, and the behaviors and the personality behind those uh, criminals because uh, which have which have uh, caused them to create to commit such crimes that's what's important um, if they are not informed that is unfair for the innocent majority our house believes that uh, the majority should not risk uh, should not take the risk of uh, being uh, being uh, being deprived of the interest instead of uh, but to give chance to these past criminals and so uh, so our house strongly opposed the, the erasure of the uh, of the records of the uh, criminals. Thank you. Thank you, debaters. Please close the floor.